nerds, what's up? It's finally time to give my review for Memories of Ice, book three of Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Now the first part of this review will be non-spoiler for anybody who's maybe trying to decide if they want to continue on with the series or just hear my overall thoughts, and then I will move into a spoiler discussion afterwards. To start off, yes, I did like Memories of Ice more than Dead House Gates. I ended up giving this four stars. A lot of you in my comment section on my Dead House Gates video guessed correctly that I would like Memories of Ice better because of how I felt of Gardens of the Moon, and that ended up being correct. Some of it was because I had fallen in love with the recognizable characters from Gardens of the Moon. So yes, that definitely played a part. But also I think I was just kind of more interested in the plot overall. I'm basic, I'm a huge mass magic system girly. And so the fact that we got so much information about Warrens and how the magic works just really worked for me. It was something I really enjoyed. And I know a lot of you were worried about when I said in Dead House Gates, like, oh, I just don't really like fantasy fighting, like battles bore me. You guys were worried about Memories of Ice, but I feel like a siege is very, very different than fighting. It was much more character focused and it reminded me a lot of like the ending of things like The Wheel of Time, every book where everyone comes together and the whole team's back. And so I actually quite liked that part. It didn't feel overly battle or fighting focused. For an overview and non-spoiler of a couple things I didn't like, I really struggled with part two of this book. This book was separated into four parts about 200 to 250 pages a piece. My copy is about 915 pages. And part two took me four weeks to get through. It was 200 pages. And the other 700 pages only took me three weeks to get through. If that kind of tells you how much I struggled in part two. And I'll kind of go in deeper why I think that was the case. But yeah, part two just did not work for me. And I think it was the low light of this book. And I think this would have been rated higher if I didn't struggle so much during that portion. So my overall non-spoiler opinion is if you really liked Gardens of the Moon and then you struggled a bit with Dead House Gates, I would definitely encourage you to go on with Memories of Ice because I really enjoyed the characters and the story in Memories of Ice. If you've gotten through two and you did not enjoy either of those books, I don't necessarily know that Memories of Ice is gonna fix it. So you might just want to and the series. Okay, so that's overall feelings. Let's get into the spoiler section of this video. So let's start with the good. So obviously it was the characters, period. I liked the characters so much. Quick Ben obviously stole the show for me. He's been hovering in my top five character list for both books. I He was never on screen enough to justify like the top spot. And so finally we got a book with so much Quick Ben, I can justify just being like Quick Ben, number one character. I just love, the chaos that he brings. I really love being able to find out why he's so powerful. I thought that was a very cool flashback scene. I, one of the best scenes is when he just drops Kalor in a hole. It's just so random. I love following a powerful character, someone who's really committed to the cause, someone you never quite know what they're gonna do. Overall, completely stole the show. Also, Perrin has to be my number two character. His whole plot line of, as master of the deck, completely fascinating for me. I loved hearing the idea that we started as wanderers and then they became holds and now they're houses. That progression was very cool. And you don't usually read about magic growing or evolving like that in fantasy. So I thought that was a very cool concept that I'm excited to learn more about. Now, I'm positive for all of you veterans who have read the whole series and reread it are like, wow, you know nothing about the magic. But I will say at this point from a first read perspective, I feel like I finally have a grasp now on Warrens and how the magic's working and the deck. And so that feels really good too. Like, okay, I've reached the third book and I'm starting to kind of get that bigger understanding. Really interesting to find out that the Warrens have lifeblood and about um, Burn and that she's sick and the crippled God and how they're poisoning the Warrens. I thought that was just, I was really invested in that. Really, every time they talked about that, I wanted to hear more. Really liked that. I love Perrin as the wanderer in the sword and just where his character has come from. I think he probably has one of the most interesting arcs from where we see him in Gardens of the Moon to now. So I'm really enjoying that and I hope we get to see more of him sooner rather than later. I also think it's really funny because I actually started reading Memories of Ice a day after I posted my Mother's Day video about dead moms and all this stuff. So I thought it was very funny that Memories of Ice opened strong with two prominent mother figures. And I really did end up liking the maybe, the maybe? I don't know how to say it, but the maybe. It, I always read it as the maybe, but I really liked her storyline. I won't say it's like the most revolutionary view of motherhood or anything. It wasn't like it blew my mind, like some books I've, I've read that way, but I thought it was a very good one. I really enjoyed 
her storyline. I love how in fantasy we can make physical things that are only emotional in our real world. So I thought, you know, the whole thing about her giving literally her life to Silver Fox and how that resolved was really good. I obviously really liked seeing Tattersail again as Silver Fox. Tattersail was my favorite character of Gardens of the Moon. I thought Silver Fox as a character was very interesting, how she had four people warring within her. Really great storyline, enjoyed that a lot. One of my favorite scenes I wanna talk about is when Carnatus dies healing Ictovian. That was a really moving scene to me and I felt like it was also a very needed scene because we have very powerful characters and I always like being able to see the cost of magic in a series. And I also thought that moment was very important because um, I'm gonna talk about this a little later. Some of the themes were a little heavy handed in this book. We'll talk about that. But one theme that was a little less obvious, but a theme that I really attached to was the idea of the cost. And we see that a lot, the cost of magic, the cost of winning a battle, the cost of maintaining alliances, the cost of healing, the cost of motherhood. The cost is very high throughout the whole book. There is a lot of sacrifice. And I thought that was very interesting as a theme in this novel. And it bonds a lot of the story together and affects almost every character. Quick Ben, the Maya Beast, Silver Fox, Ectovian, Whiskey Jack, Perrin, like every character kind of, or and Amanda Rake actually with the ending, you know, giving up Moonspawn, which I also thought was like a very moving moment when you feel a loss for something like that. And so I think that theme was distilled very well when we see our healer die literally in their last breath, trying to heal someone they felt like was more important to the cause. It was a very good scene. Oh, and then also my favorite line in the book, um, this is kind of random, I'm sorry, but when it says a half a dozen heartbeats within which Opun's coin spun, a single lazy turn from lady to lord. I actually got chills when I read that because I was like, oh no, someone's gonna get bad luck. And then it was Whiskey Jack, sad. So what a great, great line. Probably one of the most favorite lines I've read in the three books so far. Okay, before we move on to some things I struggled with, I do have to mention something that I feel completely neutral about that I think people will be surprised or upset that I feel neutral about it. And that's the K chain Shemal. First of all, what a fantasy name we got. <laughs> Two apostrophes in there. Um, yeah, I get it. I know people think these are so awesome, like undead dinosaurs with swords for hands. Like, okay, I fantasy creatures just never do a lot for me. It's like, I didn't dislike them. Like they're fine, they're cool, like it's a hard battle, but I don't feel strongly about them, so. I'm sorry. Oh, actually one more thing before we move on to things I didn't like. Um, I know a lot of people were worried about the darkness of the series and yes, Children of the Dead Seed is I think the most disgusting thing I've ever read in a fantasy novel, it's, well, it's number three, I think, because I've only DNF'd two books in the last decade and they were both because of gratuitous scenes that really disturbed me. And this would have been the worst one. Luckily, Erickson did not get graphic or detailed about it. So that was the only way I made it through. But yes, that was really hard for me to deal with. It was really disturbing and really gross and I, and I don't like it, but I'm not gonna like punish the book for it because I didn't think it was badly handled, if that makes sense. But yeah, it was dark. If the fourth book gets a lot darker than that, it may be a struggle for me. Okay, getting into the bad. Um, I already kind of mentioned this, part two was a huge struggle for me. Now, if you haven't read it in a while, part two is all about the gray swords and Gruntal. And I just could not get invested in the storyline. And the problem is unlike other long narratives like this where you always kind of have a viewpoint you're not as invested in. I feel like I have to focus very hard during Malaz and I don't wanna miss any details. I wanna make sure I know what I, what's going on. And because I wasn't enjoying it, I just, my reading came to a dead stop. For context, I think Gardens of the Moon took me three, three and a half weeks to finish. Dead House Gates took me five-ish weeks to finish. And then Memories of Ice took me seven weeks to finish. But four of those seven weeks were spent on a 200 page span you know, less than a quarter of the book. So I will talk a little bit at the end why I think Gruntle and the Grey Swords are so difficult for me. I do wanna go over a couple other things. I found the character voice in this one not as good as in the other ones, barring the characters we already knew. Like Parn and Whiskey Jack and Tattersail and all of those people, Quick Ben, had a very strong character voice, but all the new people that got introduced, really I didn't 
see a good character voice in them. A lot of them blended together. Now, I don't know if this is because I happened to be reading an Abercrombie book at the same time who is famously known for his characterization. But yeah, I felt like a lot of people came off samey, which I think is why I struggled connecting myself to new characters. I also think the introduced female characters were just much weaker in this book, other than the Maibi, who I, I really liked. But like Lady Envy and Hitan, and there was another one, um, they kind of, they just sounded the same. They had a lot of same traits and it kind of surprised me because Erickson doesn't usually do that. So I did find that weaker in this novel. Uh, the romance is still terrible. Um, that's fine. That actually doesn't bother me that much. I mean, I'm a Wheel of Time lover and I hate every romance in the Wheel of Time. It's just Erickson's romances, for how long his books are, they are just so fast. Whiskey Jack and Corlat, immediately in love. And you're just like, why? And it happened last book with Kalam and the book before with Tattersail and Parent. And it's not like I dislike the pairings at least. Like I have no problem with Whiskey Jack and Corlat. I thought that was like an interesting storyline. It's just zero to 100. And you're like, dude, this isn't a short book. Just gives us like a little bit more time there so we can get connected to it. As far as my biggest story complaint, it's definitely Kalor. I did not like the ending with Kalor. This is how I'm gonna describe it. It's like if you read Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and at the end, it really was Snape trying to feel, like steal the stone. It was Snape. It wasn't a spate and switch. It was the person acting evil the whole time. Kalor was so obviously evil, so obviously gonna betray them that I just, it made no sense that characters like Rake and Brood and Whiskey Jack, who are not portrayed as dumb characters or who have the wool pulled over their eyes, are like, no, oh, he apologized. And so it made that ending really cheap for me when Kalor ends up betraying them. It was so obvious. In fact, the whole time I thought, oh, Kalor must save the day because why would Erickson make it so obvious otherwise? And so that just really failed for me. And it's unfortunate because Whiskey Jack's death obviously was extremely sad. I love Whiskey Jack. But it, and, and I loved the moment that his um, leg snapped because you had read that thing about the Lord and Lady switching. At least that's how I um, interpreted it as bad luck. And so that, that part was so good and so devastating, but to be so obvious, it like really angered me. So I'd be interested to hear your guys' opinion on that. I thought it was a rare storyline misstep for Erickson and I wasn't a huge fan of that. So that brings me to the overall critique so far of the series as a whole. So I know that Erickson's thing is he wants these books to be just as enjoyable or more enjoyable on a reread. And I think that is a very cool concept. And I think so far it has worked well. With Gardens of the Moon and Dead House Gates, I didn't feel like my first read through suffered because of that. This was the first book I felt like it did. And that was with the Gruntle and Grey Swords because I did not understand what the shield anvil meant None of that was interesting to me. Like that reveal came too late in my opinion. I don't necessarily think you need to tell me what it was, but I need more of a hint that something was going on to invest me in those characters. And because it wasn't there, I know on a reread, I bet part two will be a lot more interesting, but this is the first time it failed on a first read. And I think it's a delicate balance to make a book good on the first read if your goal is to make it excellent on a second read. And this is the first time I noticed that balance, I think fall a little out of line in my opinion in part two. And hopefully he doesn't mind me saying this, but uh, the person I'm buddy reading this with, Kyle from Read by Kyle, he also struggled a ton during part two. So I know it's not just me. Um, and so that's the first thing. It's interesting as it, we, I go forward in the series, if I'm gonna notice that again, or if this is really just the one. Um, also, this was the first book that I felt like the themes were very kind of heavy handed. For as little as Erickson describes of his magic system, he lets you explore, Tori, get it. This book at the end, he was really going hard on his theme of mercy and compassion in a way that it was like, Erickson, you don't need to explain it to me. I got it. Which is why I think I identified more with the, the cost theme. And it also made me appreciate actually Dead House Gates more. I thought the memory theme in that book was just done so well and just a little bit more subtly. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So like the form of this book, I felt like there were some issues, but overall, clearly is by my good scene, uh, my good section. I liked a ton about this book. It had some amazing individual scenes. I absolutely loved the characters. It's gonna be a little hard for me moving on to the next book if we don't stay with some of these characters because I just like them so much. I will say I'm more of an Anamanda Rake believer. This book, I know I said last time like he was fine. This is the one I'm like, okay, he is a super interesting character and I'm really interested to see him in the future. Okay. So that was a lot. <laughs> Please let me know your thoughts below on my favorite characters, my favorite moments, um, the moments I didn't like, if you disagree or if you feel like it might change later or you did understand where I'm coming from. 
let me know. I will be continuing my read, probably taking a couple month break over the summer, but come back for more Malazan content. I will also be doing a live show with Kyle and probably some guests uh, to discuss the book, so you can keep a lookout for that. If you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. And if you want to see what I'm currently reading, as well as other nerdy rants, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.